Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Long Dark, a deeply atmospheric post-apocalyptic survival game in which a geomagnetic disaster has left us stranded in the frozen wilderness of northern Canada. And it is a great night to be playing this, because although you've been suggesting this for over a year, now tonight is a particularly windy and stormy night, so... I'm certainly in the mood. You know, I've actually played this before, a long time ago. And I think this might have been the first time I actually noted that sensation I always talk about. How sufficiently good sound design can actually make me physically engage with the conditions of the world I'm playing in. When the wind blows in this game, I feel the chill. Of course, it has been quite a long time. According to Steam, the last time I launched this, was September 26th, 2017, so I'm sure a lot has changed since then, and well, I'm no expert because I didn't play a lot even then. Now there is a campaign, the Wintermute campaign, however I'm not going to be doing that now, maybe in the future. No, for now, I'm going to be focusing just on trying to last in the survival mode. Oh, we do actually have difficulty settings here. I'm probably going to end up going with Voyager, since that's presumably like the normal mode, but it's pretty cool that we have a custom where we can presumably curate our experience. Not that I'd played enough to even know what I'd want, but uh, wildlife is sparse, but can seek you out. Survival elements are challenging, but resources are plentiful. Do I actually want that? And allows for four active feats. Okay, well, I can't know what I want until I play, but if you look in the background, look at that cabin. Now this is one of the biggest draws of the game to me. Because while we are in a vast, wild expanse, there are elements of human construction within this. From what I remember, they are appropriately dark, decaying, and, well, as much foreboding as they are a shelter. Which is one of my favorite aspects of the time that I spent here. Let's do it. Oh, wow. Now, I, I do actually remember there being multiple maps to choose from, but I've never seen it like this. There's quite a bit more, and it seems like they might actually be connected. I wonder if they're maybe separated by a loading screen and we can actually cross between them. Tell you what, I might be closing my own casket prematurely, but why don't you choose for me? Let's go. And right away, do you see what I mean? I can feel the chill. Uh, especially when you can see the snow whipping around in the wind. And all the same, even as we can feel the life being pulled out of us. It is just such a beautiful sight, isn't it? That magenta tinge of the morning sky, the white mountains and trees rolling overhead. And even that same frigid wind blowing snow about is somewhat comforting as it throws the grass and the branches around. But we've got to find some shelter quickly because this place is as unforgiving as it is beautiful. Uh, so I don't know where we are, but it looks like that might actually be a town over there. All right, now, I'm not sure if I should actually be sprinting. Does that keep me warm? Does that just tire me out, lower my hunger? Now, we can see bars on the bottom left to indicate health, hunger, thirst, and uh, temperature, so we can freeze. But I'm not sure what that eye indicator means. Okay, there's a little shack over there. Ow. Did I maybe just take a little bit of damage? And we're going to want to check out every little bit of construction that we can, because until I get the hang of how to survive from nature itself, I'm going to have to be relying on what humans have left behind. Oh no, is this the morning or the night? Because it looks like the sun might actually be setting. And not that I can actually see it anywhere. That looks like a... Oh, that's a bridge! Wow, you really don't like falling, not very far at all. Uh, 
Uh-oh. 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 Uh-oh! We actually do become, like, delirious when we're in our worst possible state. Unable to control our vision, our bodies. And we fade into the long dark. Yeah, I just wanted to reset after that. Alright, now starting somewhere totally different. And with nothing about but a partially buried by snow shack. Uh... Okay, if we come over here, though, we do actually have quite a big view, which can maybe help us find something more substantial. If we come over here, yeah, we can see a dock down there, a couple of shacks out on the lake, which I am not really too keen to go exploring. But maybe there will be some other buildings down there, or stuff we can scavenge. Oh, in the meantime, our temperature is already dropping quite rapidly. Uh, there's berries on these bushes, or something, uh, but how do we know if we can eat them or not? Right, let's open this door. Oh, uh, well, this looks... cozy? <laughs> uh, even though it's somewhat safer and presumably a little bit warmer, we can still see our breath. Although it does look like our temperature meter is rising slowly, so we can always use this as a as a rest stop. Hope uh, accelerant. Yeah, we're definitely going to need stuff like that. A stack of papers. Maybe we can burn those. Although we can't take this one, so I guess certain objects in the environment just don't count. Orange soda. Sustenance. Oh, we can even start breaking down the furniture with a hatchet. Even with the remoteness aside, I believe part of this geomagnetic event is that it's basically destroyed most or all electronics. Which means that uh, the rest of the world, well, finds itself in a different problem simultaneously. And nobody's coming for us. So the only way we're going to be able to cook this is with a good old-fashioned fire. Ah, some matches. This stuff will come so we can hand. start one when the time comes. Now, is there maybe, like, a stove or something in here? No, it doesn't seem so. Alright, let's head out and look and see if we can find a stove or something, or something down by those docks. Now, here's the thing. Ever since Minecraft became popular, survival has become a full-blown genre. Now, when I was in middle school reading Jack London's stories, ooh, there's a road and everything... This would have been a really awesome genre for me, and I would have been really excited about it. However, as an adult, I, I usually just find them pretty boring more than anything. Because usually in these games, you're just fighting to keep yourself alive for a moment longer. You're not actually working towards anything. There's no real progress. But the atmospherics of this game and the exploration are what made it stand out to me. And as we can see, there is a whole lot to explore right here in the fishing camp. A laptop, now totally useless to us. A bed which we can sleep in. Uh, but we won't want to sleep anywhere where we can't build a fire. We do not want to go to sleep cold. Uh, can we search these lockers? Oh, they are locked. We can open them with a pry bar. So finding tools is going to be important as well. Or making them, if at all possible. Can we maybe find anything inside the boats themselves? Ah, rope! Mountaineering rope, so we can use that to climb rocks and such. Uh, I, I kind of feel like... Ooh, a deer. Or is that a deer? Could be a deer, could be a wolf. The legs look a little long to be a wolf. Although if it's a deer, I don't know what it's trying to graze right now. But yeah, I feel like playing the campaign would be good for me, because it would probably teach me the basics. But hey, there is also a certain appeal in being thrown in at the deep end, isn't there? Let's keep searching. Maybe we can use those boots? Ah. I could use this. Oh, I see. There's a separate menu for it. Okay, we'll put on you, and that'll probably do us a bit better. Now, as for as for the other thing, what other layers can we use? So let's take this. It's in pretty bad shape, but it can't hurt to 
it can't hurt at all to layer up, right? So maybe that'll protect us at least a little bit more. So the thing about surviving in an environment like this is that every little thing is an invaluable resource. When there's so few elements at play, well, you really have to make the most out of everything, and so nothing can go to waste. Oh, we're just... We're, we're a walking hospital right now, finding all these medical supplies. I'm really hoping that's not just preparing me for the fact that I'm going to need a lot of them. But I've still yet to find one of these I can actually safely sleep in. I mean, if I'm going to do that, there's got to be some kind of stove, some place I can build a fire. But still, no such luck. Can I maybe eat this guy? Somehow I doubt it. Listen to the sound of the wind picking up. The creaking of the boards on these shacks. This is what drew me to the game. I mean, honestly, I actually, in my, like, 80 degree room right now, feel like I should maybe go over and put on a jacket or something. Uh, and I wonder if that little red thing that keeps splashing in the corner isn't, like, the wind burning my cheeks or something. That's what it feels like. Oh, that looks like a car up ahead. Uh, maybe it'll be warm inside. I also see a shack over there. And I doubt it'll be warm inside, but maybe warmer than out here? The only way to know is to get in, because, wow, that is dropping so rapidly. Uh, can we get in? We can, and it does help a little bit. Nobody needs this anymore. A single bullet for a revolver. And another sewing kit. And what is that back there? Is there something on the ground? We can't turn around all the way. And quite cruelly, it does let us fiddle with the radio, even though we can't actually use it. Ah, pry bar! Excellent! And a cotton toque. Oh, we also found these mittens. Put those on. We do not want bare hands in a situation like this. Another layer of socks. Even in the time that I've been in this car, which is only a few seconds, we have restored a little bit of our thermal situation. It's just really, really slow, and we've got to balance that with the fact that we are burning daylight, and presumably that temperature is going to drop at night. But see, these are the moments like this that stand out to me in gaming. When your mechanics are such that even a moment where you're huddled in the car, hands clasped together in your mittens, you just feel that moment of desperation, but also a moment of rest. Most games, you know, they want to keep you engaged. They don't want to leave a moment where you're not in some sort of action or life or death situation, but when a game can be life or death and quiet simultaneously, that's when you know they've got the right idea. This is so crazy how you look in one direction and it's just pure untamed wilderness. And then you turn around and you see the remnants of mankind. An overflowed street, power lines all twisted. I have to wonder if this place wasn't derelict even before the disaster. Now, I think back in the day, there were only two chapters available to the Wintermute campaign. I played one of them, like I finished the first chapter, and I don't think I finished the second. And I think now, six years later, they're like up to four. Like, I still don't think the story is done yet. But maybe once it is in the year 2035, I'll give it a try. Like, on the channel. Because I do remember quite enjoying it. Uh, that sign suggests that maybe that path used to be a road, and that maybe there could be something down that way. But we've got to see what's in this shack. This one quite a bit more isolated. Hopefully the door isn't snowed in so we can't get inside. Huh. You know, it looks like a family sitting on the edge of one of these docks, but 
I call it a Rorschach test. For a moment, I thought it was a family huddled on a bed while snow piles on the floor. Ooh, a backpack. Hope I can still eat this. Definitely all good things. Ah, oh, get, gotta get that protein. I've recently become a peppered beef jerky fanatic. Oh, it's actually... This did not, from the outside, look like a two-story house. What are we, in a TARDIS? Hope I can still eat this. We're actually going to be good on food for quite a while. And if we wanted... We could take water out of the tank. Still not frozen. I'd prefer to boil some from the lake, though. More antibiotics? Uh... I really kind of do feel like maybe I should have taken a different setting for the course of this video. Just because, like, I'm sure this is great for long-term survival. But I feel like it's kind of showering me in stuff for something that I'm only going to be playing for a couple of hours. Thank goodness. Now let's have a look upstairs. <laughs> nice TV. Showing clearly that this place wasn't abandoned for that long. Another sewing kit. Yeah, I need to start banking some of my stuff. So clearly this place didn't work out for the last person who tried it. I could use this. A hacksaw for cutting through metal. Between that and the pry bar, many avenues have opened to us. Tell you what, it is actually warm enough in here that we're warming up pretty rapidly. So, even absent a fire, we could actually stay here. The only thing is, of course, we'd like to either build a fire or find a stove so that we can, well, use it to cook some of our meat. Uh, you know what? I'm only now realizing that the eye is most definitely how tired we are. You know, we'll definitely want to keep this place within walking distance so that we can come back and have a seat. I think making this our place would be a good move. Although, I do sort of wish I could move the body outside. Uh, please, let me do that. But look at this. Look at these windows caked in snow and ice, causing a white bluish glow to peek through the curtains. It actually is like a really comfy winter spot. I mean, I can imagine if this place had decent heating, just chilling in here on a stormy night. Oh, it's a great place to get some reading done. But now that we've warmed ourselves up, I think we should get a better idea for what's around us. Actually, do we have a limit on how much we can carry? Uh, there is... All right, well, in that case, I'm going to start transferring over a bunch of my stuff because at this time, I don't actually need all this stuff on me. And the question now is going to come down to do we continue down the road or do we see where this side path leads? Uh, well, let's see if we can get a better view for anything that might be out there. Uh, I am seeing... I am seeing another house further down that way. So I think we're going to head in that direction. I wonder if sticks are going to be, like, continually falling down and respawning. Or if they aren't just, you know, where they are. Ooh. What is that? Is that, like, an old mine or something? Oh, and more importantly... Can we eat these mushrooms? Well, we can harvest them. Surprisingly enough, it is actually telling us the name, uh, but I feel like it would be cheating to Google whether I can eat them or not. Leave Coastal Highway. Well, presumably I'll be able to come back, right? Uh, it's starting to get darker as well. I don't think we have a lot of time. Oh, look, this tree has fallen and formed an arch over the roadway. And for a second I did a double take, thought I was in Stalker or something. But wow, it's like the road just ends right here. There's been like a rock slide or something that's knocked all this down. And somebody realized they couldn't go in the direction they wanted. Oh, we can open the hood as well. But I guess that doesn't do us much good. Maybe we can find some supplies that way sometimes. 
Anything here? Another revolver cartridge. And now all we need is a revolver. Oh, wait. Yeah, I'm seeing more and more signs. This looks like maybe some kind of logging road. But there's a car up ahead next to that sign. Is there actually more here? Maybe even... Ooh, maybe in a whole little town. Yeah. Oh, and a gas station. Can hopefully find some good accelerants in there. Oh, there's a tank right here. Yeah, yeah, this is a great place to be. I still kind of want that two-story house to be my home. It seems pretty cozy. And that one looks like it's burned to the ground. Uh, now, here's another thing. As it gets later, it does actually become quite realistically dark in these spaces. To the point where we're going to have a real hard time navigating. Hang on to this. Uh, it's cold, but and maybe we could heat it up. All right, we'll take that with us because I could definitely, definitely use it. Yeah, we don't actually have any way to search this place now that it's dark. I think maybe I'll just explore around town a little bit and come back in the morning. You know, one thing I always loved about the survival stories that I read in school is the symbology of the fire. Something that is difficult to build, but once you get it going, you have to keep it going. It almost represents your life itself out here. Which is why I'm so concerned that I haven't figured out how to do it yet. I mean, being in a house may be enough. I mean, we'll see if that holds up when night falls. I mean, it's all about defying our surroundings, isn't it? About being able to survive in spite of, well, nature itself saying that we shouldn't be alive. Thank you, whoever left this car. Oh, there is so much. A flare, soda, sewing kit, anything in the back? Now, I believe, uh, if I remember this game correctly, that flares can actually be used to ward off wolves. And maybe for warmth in a pinch. Oh, we can even we can even climb inside the construction vehicles. Although there's not likely to be anything left behind in them. Yeah. Still some beef jerky on the shelves. But other than that, it is a fair bit too dark to actually do any real exploring. So I think I'll just leave and come back in the morning. Actually, a lot of these houses are burned down. I, I wonder if maybe people didn't try to survive in the beginning. And just disaster after disaster of trying to keep a fire going in their homes just didn't work out. Or maybe issues with burning gas. Uh, here's our crafting menu. Uh, we can make tinder plugs, which are required to start a fire. We make these with sticks. Oh, uh, look, we can even make our own clothing out of moose hide and bear skin. Uh, maybe I was wrong. Maybe there is actually stuff to work towards in this game. Uh, but we're not going to see any of it if we don't get to shelter. Now, we do have enough drinks on us to stave off thirst for a little while. But I believe it's actually a mechanic that we should be able to scoop up snow and boil it, right? Uh, maybe it works differently now, but I feel like I remember that being a thing. Of course, we would also need a pot or something to collect it in. Uh, can we... Oh, we can take these stones. That's the thing. In a situation like this, everything has a use. Uh. You know, when the sun starts setting and the contrast diminishes, you suddenly start to feel how easy it would be to get lost out here. Following landmarks like these power lines and this road is going to be absolutely critical. I've only just realized that there seems to be another building here that I didn't notice before. Somehow, like an outbuilding. I'll have to check that out in the morning as well. That's the thing. When it gets dark and you have no lighting options, I'm just so not used to being like, no, I literally have no option to see inside there. And we'll have a look at our... Wait, no. 
I don't think I'm in the same place. This is all boarded up. I don't think I'm even in the same area. How did I lose this house? All I did was follow the road. Uh, okay. Maybe in here we'll have a stove? Oh, it's so dark. It's so dark. There's a bed. I'm, I'm literally just feeling around using the cursor. Shelf, bed, bed. Uh, how do I even find my way out at this rate? I just heard something in here that I do not like. Uh, is there... Is there maybe some way... I, I could light a flare. I mean, I have a bunch of them. There's a regular flare and a marine flare. Extra bright and loud. Okay, so those are better for warding off wildlife. Let's pop this thing. Oh, that's spooky. That's real spooky. <laughs> oh, the way that red glow just fades off onto the opposite end of the... Well, I, I guess bunkhouse. Right, let's collect what we can. Water purification tablets. I mean, this thing's popped. There's no putting that genie back in the bottle. Ooh, and a worn ski jacket. That'll probably help us out some. And a flashlight. Okay. This flare was worth it. It did its job. But now we'll have to start figuring out where we actually are. And I'm worried that by holding something so bright, so close to our face, I'll lose sight of what's in the distance. Oh, wait, maybe this is the house I was in. All right, let's leave you right there. I wonder if you'll remain burning if I go inside and come back out. Uh, of course, there is the issue that the flashlight does require batteries, presumably, right? And it's pretty low. Battery is dead. We only need to get in here long enough to make it to the bed. Uh, every time I come up these stairs and don't see you right beside the bed, I wonder if maybe I should be worried that this isn't just a geomagnetic apocalypse. Uh, it just feels so wrong. The corpse on the floor, me with my flare, casting this glow over all the family photos. Like a twisted version of an invasion of someone's reality. We can even pull the curtains off the windows in order to use as firewood. Well, since we can't move you somewhere more appropriate... Let's get some shut-eye. Oh, it even gives us an approximation of how many calories we'll burn while we're asleep. How many we have? You know, fitness would be so much easier if we had just, like, stats like this. If we could just clearly see what it is we're doing. Oh, but it seems like it's still quite dark. Ow! I fell down the stairs in the dark. This really is a life simulator. We managed to feel our way to the door. And maybe we should spend some time walking around outside, waiting for the sun to rise. Of course, we don't actually know what time it is. YouTube compression is going to absolutely murder this image for you, but look. There's just like a barely visible green haze in the sky. And now that the wind has died down, I mean, there is actually, surprisingly, the sounds of wildlife. Unseen, but definitely heard. But it's died down so much without the wind. Uh, it actually, combined with the darkness of the landscape, it actually does make me feel a lot more alone, and therefore creeped out. Really hammers home that nobody's coming to help, and we are losing uh, we are losing thermal energy really really quickly. It's still going to be really dark, but I think it would probably be smart to shelter in this house for a little while. There's even a metal rattle from the flagpole. This game knows that it's the little things. And not that there's a whole lot of distractions. Since we're waiting, let's have a look at this radial menu and see what we can do. 
Uh, okay, so this is all our stuff. Campcraft. Ah, there's fire. Uh, we can also use snow shelters and ice fishing holes. Oh, and there's a pastime button. Excellent. Okay, so we can do that. Let's say two hours. There's that light. And we are good to explore this area. Ooh, a wool scarf. Uh, that'll help us out. But we're starting to be a little overweight. Uh, maybe it has something to do with all these rocks and sticks we're carrying around. But this is going to be more about exploration right now than scavenging, since we are full up then. And thankfully, there don't seem to be the remains of any inhabitants in this house. Oh, wow, there's a full-blown snowstorm going on. Okay, we are probably going to be losing... We are probably going to be losing heat really quickly. And in the midst of all this, we are not leaving this place. Not even going to try to navigate in this. And that's the thing about these situations. Sometimes the weather decides your course of action for you. But for now, we do at least have a clearer picture if this is any good to eat. of what we're doing here. You know what? I don't think this is any good to eat. Ketchup chips sounds absolutely awful. Oh, we actually have to pry it open and reach in ourselves. Well, at least you have at least you have things for us to drink here. Ooh, it's got a whole garage. Another pry bar here, some spray paint. I wonder what we use that... Ah, we can use it to leave markers in the environment. Very useful for navigation. I bet we can find all kinds of tools here. And soda. I kind of like how each individual drawer is actually searchable. It makes it really feel like you're scrounging around in here. It's a jerry can full of some gasoline car battery. Uh, it can only be harvested for a scrap lead. Well, so that's the thing, is like maybe we'll need a gun at some point, and the question is going to be whether we use it for hunting or self-defense. Uh, tired already? Oh, we can use this as a fire. Okay, we could take charcoal from it, or we could just start a fire. I think that's what we'll do. Now the storm has once again died down a little bit. And once more, it's treating us to beautiful imagery if you don't stop and think about the horrible situation you're in. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be breakable ice. It looks suspiciously blue. But I really do want to have more looks at these burned houses. I want to know if there's not maybe something we can learn for them, or something we can scavenge from them uniquely. Uh, sadly, no such luck. Oh, we can actually see stuff inside a vehicle before we get in, which is pretty cool. Imagine if we got in the car and we just saw a second set of footprints leading right behind us, with no one there when we looked around. See, at the moment, it's not really food or water I'm concerned with, or even stuff to build a fire. Right now, what I'm worried about is really anything that might help me with navigation. I mean, we got enough, uh, we got enough calories from peanut butter to last us a lifetime. Tell you what, I'm gonna try to sleep for a little while, just like a couple hours, just to replenish some of our need to sleep. And then we'll start making our way up the road, and we get the achievement, the first of many. Survive one day in a survival game. Really don't like those noises in the distance. They're more than a little bit concerning. But I do want to make my way down this road just to figure out what all is out here. It oh wait. That looks a little lower to the ground than what we saw before. I think that's actually a wolf. Ooh, a storm lantern. This. 
Okay, that's probably going to be our primary light source. A whole bunch more casings and cartridges. And a revolver. Thank goodness. Well, now we do have the ability to defend ourselves if need be. Maybe even take out that wolf if we actually have to. But sadly, it does not let us loot the register. You know, that actually would be pretty appropriate for something like this, right? I mean, in a situation like this, money is little more than kindling. And we should be able to use it for that. Oh, there's actually a bed here. Dreaming of home? Alright, let's get this fire barrel going. Uh, start a fire using a tinder plug. Why not? Failed. Oh, we can fail the attempt? Okay, well, I guess... Uh, I guess the use of an accelerant determines our chances, maybe? Uh, it even says chance of success 95%, only 55 without it. There we go. But we only have a couple minutes, so we need to start uh, putting on sticks. Sticks, 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 sticks. We are incentivized to keep this going for as long as possible. Now, we can't actually use as many things as I thought as fuel. Hmm. But maybe if we can reclaim some wood by breaking stuff down? Uh, feels so wrong being able to see that red glow and smoke indoors, but... Well, here, it's about all we got. It's keeping us warm at the very least. Uh, we can add reclaimed wood, which each adds 50 minutes of duration. So that's, that's kind of the idea, I think, of what I was saying before. The reason it's so difficult to start a fire in this game is because it wants you to maintain that fire. That fire is your life. A note left behind... Two more joined us today. Seems their horse couldn't go any further. One of them's called Sean. He's from Ireland. Not quite home, but close enough. And apparently he came here for an acting career. Best thing, though, is that he's got a bag of fruit pastilles that he's going to share just with me. Probably for the best, since everyone's so paranoid. The other idiots would probably think he was trying to poison them. I thought it would be safer this far north. Less people and all. Maybe I should leave? Ah, contributed by Backer 644. So I, I guess, uh, I guess backers of this game were able to contribute notes and stuff. Things to be found in the environment. Uh, but I guess that sort of does confirm that people were surviving here even after the event that stranded us. Pretty sure that that was just like metal squeaking in the breeze, but it sort of sounded vocal, didn't it? Alright, I'm going to add a whole bunch more fuel to this. And the reason is because I actually want to head back and grab a bunch of my stuff. We are moving base over to here, and we're going to keep this fire going. Huh, I just realized the amount of weight I can carry is diminishing. Maybe with my tiredness, or perhaps with my hunger. Alright, we'll... Want to make this fairly quick. Uh, some of these sounds, due to the games I usually play, make it sound like something's sneaking up on me. But I'll tell you what, I did bring my handy-dandy revolver. Whoops! Okay, how do we put this thing away? Oh, now it's saying there's a sprain risk because we're exhausted or encumbered. Uh, and we're at higher risk for a sprain when traversing sloped ground. That's pretty detailed. Alright, I'm thinking that even be that as it may, we're just gonna have to head back. Now, I do wonder, because it keeps talking about, like, being wet. 
But I really doubt that swimming is a mechanic in this, so I wonder if we don't also maybe get wet from walking in snow? Like, maybe there's a reason why we should be walking around on trails like this. But it is getting later, and we need to make our way back to that fire. We actually don't have time to explore around too much. like night is coming. Listen to the howls of those wolves as the fog sets in. And the thing about weather like this is that the same space can come to represent many different things. The road can represent safety. Beyond the road can represent being lost, but sometimes, sometimes those tricky environments make their way over to where we are. Yeah, yeah, I know you're tired. You've been very vocal about that, but I'd rather be tired next to a fire. For a second, I thought that was a wolf standing there, or even a bear. Oh, the way it just came in at the edge of this mist, and the way... This actually came on so quickly. I was actually just walking and noticed that I couldn't see the sun anymore, couldn't see the sky at all, and... Well, next thing I know, partway through my commentary, it's completely enveloped the land. If I didn't know there was a town up ahead, we'd never find it. Yeah, I'm just using these dips in the snow as landmarks because, yeah... When it comes down like this, we are in actually very real danger of not being able to see where we are and walking right on past where we need to go. Signs like this are actually a godsend. I don't know how quickly the time advances, but I really, really hope our fire is still burning. If so, we're going to have ourselves a nice cooked meal. Ah, oh, good, it's still there. All right, let's get something good on the fire. Uh, still another hour left. We'll add some fuel to it. Uh, all of it. There we go. That buys us another couple hours. And uh, I suppose we place down... Uh, ooh, gamey venison. Uh, delicious. Uh, it's actually right here where we have an opportunity to observe just how long this takes. And of course, we don't want to burn it, but it looks like the passage of time is actually not nearly as fast as many other games. That means we are going to have... we can't sleep just yet, but we are going to have a little while to bank our stuff and maybe look for a few more sticks. You ever come inside from, like, shoveling snow or something? Just doing something out in the extreme cold? And then... and just, like, pour yourself, like, a nice hot bowl of soup? Moments like that are absolutely incredible, and, you know, just as I was having issues feeling the wind on my face, I can feel the heat from this fire in front of me, feel the hot coffee running down my throat. Oh, uh, look, it seems like we even get some bonus effects from the heat. We don't just have, uh, we don't just have full thermal, we have thermal plus. Only thing is that... Light certainly is becoming an issue again. I mean, we'll definitely have to sleep again very soon, but nevertheless, oh, this fire is actually likely to go out. And we're ready. All right, let's begin the feast. Oh, that's the good stuff. That's the very good stuff. Two hours left on this. It's going to take us an hour and a half to break down this crate, because uh, we apparently can't use the saw or the pry bar. But we'll get all this stuff and keep that fire going while we go to sleep. Let's have our first comfortable night's rest in quite a while. I really don't like how I just heard the sound of, like, a dragging chair or something in this darkened space. Uh, like 
25 minutes left. Can we maybe find something else to burn? You know, not to get political or nothing, but humans totally should burn their houses down and go live in the woods. Because I've been doing this for a few minutes now, and it honestly is just, like, super satisfying. Just walking around gathering firewood. Like, there's just something that works on such a primal level. Something so instinctually satisfying about picking something up and being able to know, okay, I picked that up, that is five more minutes of the good life. Such a direct, like, so, so directly being able to tie your work to your outcomes, you know? Only a little while. Oh, very, very, very close. Very, very close. Boom. And that gives us a little bit longer. We need a cooking pot in our inventory to boil water. Which I believe is not how it used to be. That's very, very annoying. If we can't boil snow without it, which, by the way, why can't we just use one of these empty cans that we have? Then it may not even really be worth trying to keep this fire going, honestly. Let's just sleep a while longer. I wonder if birds can actually maybe lead you to something like dark wood. Oh, there's a wolf out there. Seems to be facing the other way, but I do wonder if they don't just run up and attack you. Or maybe slowly stalk you and wait until you're at your weakest moment. I'm finally going to try and see what happens if we actually cross between regions. So this region is the Lost Coastal Highway. And we end up in the Abandoned Mine. Did I take that lamp with me? We did. Come on. Uh, so there is something to explore here. Quality tools. Okay, I'm going to leave that for now. Flashlight. Uh, okay, take that just in case. Maybe it has some batteries. Oh, what am I doing here? This is so dangerous. Lantern fuel could always use more of that. Especially given the fact that if we lose this thing... We're just left completely in the dark. Like, literally no way out. Not even windows to guide us, like what we had in the houses. This does not look to be in good shape at all. Something tells me this is something that wouldn't have been safe even before. However, somebody has been leaving candy bars around here. Which is all the reason a granola bar might even be slightly healthy. But a backpack is... Well, it's slightly more ominous. Does that mean that somebody came in here and never came out? I wonder if this doesn't come out someplace else. But yeah, this place has definitely collapsed. Either recently, or in the distant past, I don't know. Uh, that looks like a not good plan. Uh, I mean, given its location, maybe it could have been spared the worst of the disaster? No, no, we don't want to extinguish. We want to push the buttons, but actually also, no, we really don't. That would be a really dumb plan. Coal. Now we can probably use that for a fire. Breaking this stuff down wouldn't be the worst thing. Uh, but unfortunately, it's hardly worth it because we get like three hours for every hour and a half we spend breaking it down. If only we had like a hatchet or something. Although I don't know why a saw or a pry bar can't do the same thing. There's the obvious constant need for survival, but because it is a video game, there's also the draw to explore. The draw to just see what's around you. And the way this game combines those things is that, well, you are a nomad. I mean, I suppose, theoretically, if you know everything you're doing, it's possible to stay in one spot long term. 
But in this, exploration is actually imperative to survival. Which is why we're gonna have to go right up Wolf Road. I just realized there's a lonely little cabin up on that hill. And as far as I'm concerned, it's got my name on it. Let's go check it out. Oh, and another house up there. What have you got for us? I'll certainly take it. Uh, but this is not doing good things for our thirst, which is really our main concern. And being able to recover from the cold, of course, is always good. Good to have rest stops along the way. See, we only found that one skill book in the beginning, even though they all look like skill books. Can't seem to check that door under the stairs. You know what this actually reminds me of visually? It reminds me of a game I played a while back. I can't remember what it was called. But you were off in the frozen wilderness, your car broke down. And you found shelter in this dark, abandoned mansion. Ooh, a water bottle. Certainly could use that. Uh, that's no good. Okay, let's get our gun ready. Make sure we're fully loaded up. And keep moving. That's right, you go that way and I'll go this way and we never have to have a problem, right? Uh, that's actually an island. We're not going to be able to get there without crossing over the ice. Which is really not something I want to do, but... It does seem like there's more down this way. Oh no, you, you go back the other way. You don't have to mirror my movements. Oh no. It's a whole freaking pack. Oh, you stay where you are. From this point forward, since you definitely know we're here now, we cannot leave you out of our sight. It's easy to forget that they're struggling probably the same way I am. And there's a dead deer right there. I think I may need, like, a knife or something. But if these wolves run out here, it would be very tempting to try and go out and cut myself some venison. I've entered the food chain, and that means competing for those resources. But when it comes to wolves, especially in numbers like that, it's going to be less a matter of killing them so I can take what I want, and more a matter of just keeping them at bay until I can back into some shelter. Which we should be fairly near to. I believe I did see a house up on this hill over here. Uh, which maybe will also even provide a good vantage point. Waterfront cottages. Uh, well, you say that others. Oh, Three, well, currently two. Let's put this away and see what's in store for us. More water. Too much water. Yeah, the nomad lifestyle is definitely suiting me pretty well right about now. Yeah, these houses seem to be more or less copy and pasted. Which is all well and good, but, you know, I'm trying to keep the exploration going. Give me more stuff like the mine. I do remember from back in the day that there is a dam somewhere, right? Although, who knows where that is in relation to us. And the creative spark of this place literally cannot conceive of something that doesn't exist right outside their window. I'm trying to debate right now whether we're going to continue along the highway today... Or just stop here for the night. Because we are slowly approaching that point where we're going to start losing maximum carry weight. And once we get there, it's going to be much, much harder to, well, get somewhere where we can actually survive. And I do not want to be dropping all my stuff. Now, this place does look a little bit different. A lot of good food laying about. 
And this does look like a comfy place to crash if need be. That really caught me off guard after so long. Uh, it keeps striking me that all of you died with a lot of supplies around. Why is it that I always end up sleeping next to the frozen corpses? Uh, makes it a real drag and it does not inspire good dreams, I'll tell you that. But yeah, I'm going to go outside, have a look around, and if I can't see anything in the near distance, I'm probably just going to crash here for the night. Well, really in that one, because, you know, it's corpse-free. Which they usually charge extra for at Airbnb. Wow, you let me get very close. And as I did, I realized you actually have a very detailed model. I'm not at the point where I have to cook and eat any animals, so I won't. For a second, the way, the way those dark shadows were beyond the trees, I almost thought it was like a city building or something. Um, having mirages of urban life. Early rise. Uh, once again, YouTube is absolutely going to murder this in compression. But I think it's time for us to hit the road again and see what's up there. That's really all I care about at this point. I mean, I could stay in one spot and survive for a long time, keep a fire going. But the game is really giving me so much that I'd rather use this time just to see what's out there. Oh, it was a deer. Okay, I was just, I was just reaching for my gun because I did not like the sound of something crunching on snow in the dark. Uh, the downside to leaving early is that it is quite cold. Let's have a search slash sit in this car. Uh, actually, it's so cold we're even losing condition in the car as well. Uh, the road is collapsed up ahead. I'm actually, since we have tons of lantern oil, going to start using this thing. There we go. Maybe we can get through, maybe. I mean, just because a car can't doesn't mean we can't. Ah, oh, but it's got that problem where holding something so bright so close to your face makes it so that you can hardly see beyond it. Uh, and we can leave Coastal Highway. It leads to another region. Crumbling Highway, Old Island Connector. Yeah, crumbling is right. And I definitely do think all of this happens post-disaster. I mean, people were talking about surviving in those towns, referencing that something has happened. I will take that firewood for sure. And especially since we don't actually know where we're going to hunker down here. Look at that. Listen to the sounds of those wolves, the dead trees, and the starry night sky. Oh, the soundtrack really seems to support right now that every once in a while it just wants you to stop and look around. Such a beautiful blue glow that being cast... Yeah, way to ruin the moment. Being cast over the landscape. Oh, it's like a painting. On oh, the way it reflects in the snow. Alright, but uh, same as before. Man-made structures act as our checkpoints. And we really, really need to find one! Okay, uh, flares, 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 uh, come on, come on, come on. There's more than one. I know there's more than one! Come on. Oh, it's a quick time event? How am I supposed to do anything about this? Come on, come on, come on, come on! Ow. Ow, blood loss and sprained wrist. Uh, quick time events are the worst thing ever. Why would anyone ever use them? Okay, I have bandages. But I'm gonna have to use them pretty soon. Oh, the way their eyes glow in the dark like that. No, you don't. Yeah, you better run. Should I have taken another shot? I don't know. 
Now the question is, will they stay away? Oh, there's some houses there, but they're all burned down. A car that I could maybe take shelter in. Okay, uh... Oh, come on, I had bandages. Did I leave them? I can't use cloth? Ugh. Wait, where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Where are you? Uh, your food now. But not for me. I am very, very cold. And I need to find myself somewhere to stay. Uh, who knows how long I'll have to walk to find something like that. I get the feeling that the area I was just in was basically easy mode. I'm at risk of hypothermia, Die yeah. But every structure I can find is burned down. Uh, will it be enough to get inside this car? Alright, uh, right here. It's not really going to help. It's not really going to help at all. Okay, maybe I can try... Maybe I can try building a fire of my own. Just right there on the street. Oh, but I don't know if I have enough. Oh, I can do that. We can definitely want to use an accelerant. And there we go. Okay, and we can warm ourselves oh, here. For that. And have ourselves a drink. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to stay here. This isn't something we keep going permanently. Okay, so we'll apply some antiseptic. But stopping blood loss ain't gonna be easy. Can I maybe, like, tear something up? Can I use that to... Okay, I can use that to make bandages. Oh, this really is like, uh, Project Zomboid. Alright, and we'll use that on here. And keep us in the fight just a little longer. Oh, we are all kinds of messed up. So, this is what it's come to. I went from a bunch of cozy houses with tons of food and supplies to huddled in front of a fire between a collapsed mountain pass, nursing my wolf bites, and just keeping watch in the dark for glowing eyes. Well, at least I managed to take one with me. At the very least, I'll have a nature kill death ratio of one. Back off on the road with us, for as much as it would make sense to stay here, but we can't actually progress beyond this point. This is all we've got. Well, let's just top off, I guess, on the fire and then head down this way. I really don't know where else we can go. Maybe up in the direction that that truck is facing? Yeah, going down there does not seem like a wise plan. So through here is going to be the only way. Oh, you guys are so smug. Look at me. I can outrun a wolf. Yeah, but for all I know, this is just leading me back around the way I came. This doesn't actually seem to be leading me anywhere useful. Ah, uh, but maybe... Maybe before we succumb to infection, we can still see some things. Because we've got another lost mine. Number three coal mine. Uh, this is the stuff I live for. Actually, not really. I hate doing underground urbex in real life. But I can always pretend. And we do still have our handy-dandy pry bar. No, 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 no. That's not what I wanted. Hope nobody needs this anymore. Can opener. Okay, well, at this point that feels like insult to injury for my Project Zomboid series. You know, I do have to appreciate this game for something. And that's when it's dark, it is truly dark. If we kill our light, we can't see a thing, and if we're not in line of sight of that door, well, even now, because it's at night, we'll just have no way out. Don't even have the benefit of being able to feel our way around. 
And it seems this mine too is collapsed. And thankfully, the collapse is doing the work for us of navigating. Here wouldn't actually be the worst place to sleep if I still had my bedroll. I mean, at least here we could be sure that the wolves aren't going to get us. And that's the cool thing about being able to build a fire anywhere, or at least assuming you can build a fire here. I mean, you could turn anywhere into home base. And what you actually decide to do that with may depend entirely on circumstance. And it leads to weird stuff sometimes. That's the cool thing about open world games. Sometimes something you would never think of normally just makes sense in the moment. Uh, it looks like certain areas have been barred off. So they already knew that this place was unsafe. And yet here we are, trudging down, seemingly in an attempt to make our body the hardest on Earth to discover after all this is said and done. Have I mentioned I deeply appreciate games that have no ambient lighting whatsoever? An insistence that if there's going to be light, it's got to have a source. Actually, this is not something I should probably be talking about right now in order to keep myself sane, but uh, that was actually one of the major points on the movie The Descent. I think there's only a handful, if any, shots in the movie where the scene isn't lit by something in the scene. So if they can see something, it's because they're using an electric lantern or a flashlight. But once more, we find ourselves at an elevator. One which we have no power to use ourselves. But we can at least be rewarded with the forbidden orange soda. Uh, and some coal. Oh, wait, no, we can actually... It's not an elevator. We can leave on this side. Uh, it's quite a bit darker than the view through that door led us to believe. But we have made it to yet another region. Oh, let's continue following the trails. This path branches off, but this one seems to be the official one. Which means it'll hopefully lead us to a house or something, some place we can safely sleep. And let's not forget to listen for those telltale growls. And with all the time that I had spent moving from house to house, I had forgotten just how remote this place really is. How the area we were in is probably the most populated it gets, and, well, civilization is going to start to look fewer and farther between. Uh, but these are those atmospheric moments. This is the Jack London life. Walking through the woods at night, trudging through the snow by lantern light. This is the kind of atmosphere you just cannot get with a flashlight. I feel like I'm an embarrassed dad trying to convince his kids that this trip doesn't suck. Some beef jerky? You can never go wrong with beef jerky unless you're trying not to die of dehydration. But we still gotta keep moving because it's still very cold out here and I don't think I have another fire in me. Oh, this is an actual road. But which way should I go? Hmm, some kind of snowed-in infrastructure on the left here. Maybe we should try there? But then again, maybe not. Uh, whenever you go off the road like this, it's always such a gamble. And for all I know, this is all collapsed in on itself. Nope, 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 nope. No. It's yet another mine. I don't know whether to be excited or appalled. I mean, we need sleep. 
Whenever we first enter, I always think that that cold breath in front of us is dust. Lantern fuel can never have enough. That'll come in handy. Well, thus begins another descent. And this one not giving me the advantage of being linear. Well, we can take this wood. That'll help if we need to build a fire. I don't know if we can start one with that, but maybe we can. Uh, the thing is, while we're in here, we're at the very least warming up, which does provide some incentive for adventuring. I don't know, it's weird. It feels almost like a middle finger to the world to be doing this while I should be trying to survive. It's kind of, well, exciting in that way. I wonder if this is any good to eat. Oh, I'm sure it's fine. And there we go, we get a whole bunch of thirst and hunger. Uh, always eat strange food you find in abandoned mines. Especially ones that look like they've been abandoned since like the 1800s. The presence of a torch there sort of suggests that someone is under those rocks. And once more, we have the opportunity to move out. Get another flare in case of wolves. And now it seems the morning light finally greets us. As well as potentially a structure. Okay, uh, revolver out so that the wolves don't ruin this now. Really starting to hate those guys. And let's see what's over here. Hopefully it's someplace we can sleep. But this highway has been such a guiding light. Nope. Nope. Just... Ooh, just a gatehouse. What is this? Oh, uh, we are doing... I feel like ever since I stopped meandering around, this has become a real urbex game. I shouldn't be letting you escape. Four bullets left, though. Yeah, hopefully you learned your lesson. Hopefully by the time you can do anything about me, I'll be long gone. But I'm sure you'll be back on your own. Definitely use some first aid stuff in case I end up, uh, in case I end up having to sew any wounds. But yeah, this looks like some kind of, well, maybe mine or logging camp? Looks like I survived another night. Uh, do you say that when, uh, well, when you survived another night? Uh, we are starting to become very over-encumbered, so we really have to find a place to sleep soon. And I'm really hoping this can be the place to do it. Now, will we be able to get in here this way? Oh, I swear if we can't, that is so dumb. Ooh, or maybe... Oh, we can search the glove boxes. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, I see. We gotta crawl through the vehicle. Oh, that's kind of clever. Alright, I would love to explore this in full, but first we really gotta find a spot to rest. Maybe that outbuilding will have some bunks. A couple of them. I should also check myself to make sure that I'm not... Uh, I'm at a sprain risk, but it doesn't seem like I have any infected wounds. Let's get in there. With any luck, it'll even have a stove. Can't feel my hands. Yeah, I know it's very cold, but we can sort of replenish ourselves in here. Uh, no such luck. But there are some beds. Why are they all piled up like this? That's really, really strange. This will come in handy. Well, we do have the ability to sleep here, however uncomfortable it may be. But why has it been left in such a state? Almost seems deliberately set up to allow only one path to walk through. And it's in moments like that that I really get a little bit creeped out by the swing of this. Look, in the swing of the lantern. The shadows actually move a bit, and it sort of looked like somebody was peeking their head around the corner there. 
Okay, this is this is where we're stopping. This is definitely where we're stopping. So let's just find among the more comfortable beds, see if we can't maybe leave this right here. That's a cool feature, by the way. And get a few hours at least of sleep. There we go. We're in much better shape now. Let's not forget to take that with us, although we will, of course, have to uh, refuel it. Make sure we get some more drinks in our belly and continue the exploration because this is a really cool place and I cannot wait to get inside. Right, get inside is right. Uh, we've healed somewhat, but it seems another snowstorm is upon us, so we really couldn't leave even if we wanted to. And it's at this moment I can't help but think of uh, the thing. Once again, thinking of the exact wrong thing at the exact wrong time. All right, well, let's grab a bunch of this stuff up. I don't need more antibiotics right now. But I do wonder what kind of unique loot will be in a place like this. Hope nobody needs it. Ooh, a firearm cleaning kit and a whole bunch of revolver ammo. Great. Oh, at least we got all that. Now, uh, we could sleep here. Although I doubt it'll let us build a fire inside a crumbling wood building. Oh, there's a whole floor out here. Those look like boats stacked up over there. Oh, what kind of place was this? Look at that light pouring through and a wave of snow along with it. What is that? Is that a whale skeleton? Okay, reclaimed wood. I think it, it must be, right? Is this maybe like some kind of place that did whale fishing? I cannot think of anything else that would produce a skeleton that large. Oh, this is such a cool find. If I were exploring this in real life, this is the room I would be spending like hours in just getting pictures and video from every angle. Maybe we can crouch under here. Yes, cedar firewood. Yes. Well, I suppose they'll always provide some way to navigate. Oh, I'm just listening to all this rusted metal as I walk over it. Through the belly of a literal beast. And we can head back out over here. But that's not what I want to do right now. I want to see what else is here. I don't think those are the boats they do their whaling in. I mean, they definitely didn't bring that back here. But I suppose if it was here at the start of the disaster, they had plenty of food for plenty of time. This looks like some kind of generator or like engine room. And a note left behind. A flat sand or river stone, three inches in width. At least six inches long is ideal for sharpening your blade. Axe or knife, you'll want to lubricate the surface with water to keep the filings in suspension, and your work will go faster. When no light is visible along the cutting edge, you've reached your mark. Strop along a piece of leather for a final honing. The importance of a sharp tool cannot be overstated. And we're back where we came from. I wonder if there's anything else to see around this property. I mean, I kind of feel like maybe we should spend the night because we are still pretty tired, but look. There's a bridge up there. Maybe crossing that could be something to do. And another one of these trailers outside. I wonder if we'll find that in an equally disturbing state. Huh. And it seems we've found the rest of it. 
And the rest of multiple from the look of it. <laughs> Can we take a little souvenir? Who am I kidding? There's probably more beneath the snow. Uh, but this is so cool. A dock used for whaling. Well, it looks like it's seen better days. Oh, I just realized there's a lighthouse in the distance over there. Uh, okay, wolves cooperating. Maybe that could be a final goal for this video, because I have been recording for over three hours at this point. Let's do that. That'll be such a cool final destination. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say it like that, but you know what I mean. Okay, I can just press 2, and you'll automatically take the gun out. So that's useful to know. So if I if I press it again, will you put it away? No, but if I press something else... I was about to say, are you seriously still going to be coming at me even after I shot you? And you'll leave bloody tracks along the ground. Sorry, man, but, you know... Survival of the fittest, that's cool. And this thing right here done made me the fittest overnight, so you're gonna have to deal with that new world order. I guess the water still flows in some places. Oh, this is such a gorgeous looking game. Every piece of human connection seems like a port in the storm. And that's the thing, you don't just head towards it because there might be people, or because there might be shelter or supplies. You head towards it, I think, because there's connection in it. There's connection in the image of something that stands out amid the terrain. Uh, there's stuff up there, so maybe we'll hit the lighthouse last. We're actually carrying quite a bit of wood, so eh, once once that tiredness starts hitting us, it's going to hit us really hard. But our friend the wolf came this way as well. I wasn't even intending on tracking it, but here we are. I do feel bad, but you got to do what you got to do. Now, where has it led me? That's the question. Ooh, an old church. I thought I heard footsteps that were not mine. Oh, it's a, it's a couple of little thumpers. Howdy, guys. This revolver is for predators, not you. Fear not. I don't know why I brandished it at them to make my point. Make our way through these bars. We can. This place is crumbling. Although this place is quite old, it... Looks like some did still seek shelter here when the collapse happened. Did you drop anything good? Doesn't seem so. Well, we have another bedroll. And some more revolver cartridges. At a certain point, maybe we could go John Wick on these wolves, but it doesn't really seem worth the effort. Firearm cleaning kit. Wow, there was a lot of stuff in this church. Probably all belonging to the deceased. We could actually hole up in here if we wanted a really atmospheric night. Uh, we might actually be back for a little sleepover. Oh, look at that. Hang on, what's the safest way for us to get down there? Maybe made by whoever found themselves in the church. Something so that someone could recognize, hey, I'm here. Dallin's Cairn. Its story is not yet written. Ah, oh, this is another backer thing. <sighs> Look, bud. Truce? I mean, you're gonna say no, but truce? That's what I thought. I can't let you live after that. Uh, you've got two bullets in you. But you were just too dangerous. And you were too undeterred by the first shot. Somehow, walking up to this thing feels like some kind of final stretch. 
I haven't even been paying attention to the way we've come. I couldn't find my way back to where we started if I wanted to. But this feels like... Well, I mean, I suppose that's the point of a lighthouse, that it calls you to it. Well, actually, that's kind of the exact opposite of what a lighthouse is for. A lighthouse is really saying, hey, stay away from me, you'll die. But if you're on foot, it's a slightly different message. Oh, look at those waves wash against the ice. Even the music seems to know the right times to come in. Because this really does feel sort of like a triumphant moment. In this moment, I am Canadian. The lonely lighthouse of Desolation Point. I'm home. Ah, oh, now we can start a fire here. That's actually the kind of stove I've been looking for this entire time. That'll come in handy. But of course it wouldn't be much of a lighthouse run if we didn't climb to the top, would it? Ooh, an arrowhead. So this is where you sleep, huh? I wonder if lighting a fire down there won't fill the space with warmth. I keep hearing my mobile ring and get excited every time, but it's just as dead as always when I check. I don't know why I still carry it around. Sean's been my savior. Especially after Sue and Tori's suicide. Same Sean as before? He told me about how he always wanted to do Death of a Salesman. His American accent's pretty good, too. We fell asleep in each other's arms last night. Sean wouldn't wake up. Are they here somewhere? And here's the base of that light. Huh, imagine as an endgame goal being to restore this thing. Let its beacon shine again. Maybe in the hopes of attracting help, but just as much to show that we can still do something, still have some influence on the environment, even after everything that's happened. There's that church over there. A whole bunch of rifle cartridges. I wonder if they didn't maybe try to smoke some caribou from up here. Looks like they may have actually gotten something. Is that perhaps a deer down below? Or, and for all I know, maybe a seal or something. I don't know. Oh, listen, we can even hear our various things clanking around as we walk down the stairs. This game is on another level. Look at that light pouring through the window. The shadow along the corner. Uh, this is the lighthouse life, and I really like it. I'm going to start a fire down there just to find out if it warms up the entire structure. But tonight, we're going to be heading over and having a sleepover in the church. So much accelerant, so we don't even really have to worry about them. Worked. And let's warm ourselves up. Maybe put in a little bit more. Uh, let's use some cedar firewood. That'll keep us going for a few more hours. Another fire log, another five hours. Perfect. And let's see. Eh, it's not like we really need the warmth. I mean, we're doing fine as is. And that is nightfall. Let's just make sure we still have some firewood on us. We do. And go see about spending the night in that church, because that seems like a creepy fun field trip. Oh, seeing that window flicker. Imagine just in one of those flickers we saw a ghastly face pressed against the window with its hands at its sides like it was peering in. 
Anyway, let's take all this stuff and make our way up. Ooh, a hidden cabinet. And there's nothing in it. Well, that's sort of expected. Let's grab that firewood and head out. What have we here? Uh, such a different atmosphere. I really, really do love lantern light in an enclosed space. And when you combine that with the spiral staircase of a lighthouse, well... I really feel like I'm living the life. Hang on, no, before we leave... Before we leave... I have to be a dusty old lighthouse keeper one time. Slowly ascending the spiral staircase with my lantern. Passersby seeing the glow emerge in each window sequentially. Slowly climbing the tower. If I were a lighthouse keeper, I would never maintain the light. I would just be going up and down, up and down, up and down, all night, every night. Oh, wait. I forgot to stare longingly from the crow's nest. Oh, yeah. That's good long staring. Look at me pacing back and forth. Oh, the only thing is from here, I almost can't tell which direction the church is in. I mean, I know roughly where it is, but... I'm a lighthouse keeper. I'll figure it out. This almost feels like it could be the setup for a horror game all itself, doesn't it? Uh, you know, it, it took me a long time to really get moving, but I think I started to enjoy this game a lot more when I stopped worrying about surviving and started worrying about exploring, because this... I'm learning again, is an incredibly deeply atmospheric game. In the beginning, I wasn't sure how well this would work as a video, but I, I am long convinced. I just hope we'll be able to find what we're looking for out here. Hopefully the snow will die down at least a little bit. At least enough to allow us to see the silhouettes in the trees, and from there, what's beyond. Well, we found the road at the very least. And I'm not seeing the eyes reflected in the dark. I wonder if they'd actually look like that any time, or... I just heard something that I thought might have been them. I wonder if that's actually the case any time, or if it's just if you have some kind of light source on you that their eyes catch in that way. Either way, I think this is... Probably the way up. Ah, there we are. Yes, this is the right way. Ah, we are so lucky. Let's just grab some sticks. Oh, those little rabbits are making me so nervous when I can hear them moving around in the dark. Have you ever been like that, walking down a path in the woods at night, and you just hear all the little critters moving around you? It can be hard to tell whether something's big or small sometimes. Now, chipmunks in particular like to punch above their weight when it comes to the sounds. What was that noise? Was that something to do with the... with the lantern? Oh, and you actually left a knife at your feet I didn't even notice before. Well, I'll take it, even though I'm not going to get a chance to use it in this playthrough. Although I suppose the save will still be here. I haven't exactly played in a way that's conducive to lasting a long time. But let's start ourselves a fire. There we are. Looks like it worked. And this is looking like a pretty cozy spot, if I do say so myself. The walls are down, there's creepy stained glass and religious iconography. There's a literal corpse sitting next to us. But we're warm, we've got the crackle of the fire, the creaking of the beams overhead, and the whistling of the wind outside. And inside, let's be honest. And to me, this seems like a pretty good place to chill for a while. Let's keep this fire going for a nice long time. And I'm ready to just kind of take a seat right next to you. I mean, not in like a metaphorical way. I'm leaving in the morning. 
And here comes the creepy music. Imagine if this guy just slowly started lifting his head and turned to look at us with a blank expression on his face. Imagine if that happened. I swear, I swear, like, there was, uh, maybe it's the puff of the breath or, like, the shadows moving. I swear I saw him move just a little bit. Okay, well, I'm not going back to the lighthouse now. I used all my wood. And we can't break down the pews. Eh. Look, everybody, I'm burning a book in a church, but it's not political, so don't read into it. Literally, you can't read into that. I burned the book. Yeah, that music definitely makes it sound like something's approaching. <laughs> oh, imagine a horror game where you're sort of tied to a campsite like this. And so all you can do is anxiously look around or maybe try to hide and hope that if something invades your camp, it won't find you. But these are all thoughts for another time. This was such a cool return. I mean, I didn't really play this game too much when I played years ago. I don't know if the campaign is complete yet. Maybe I'll come back and do that at some point, but even the survival gameplay has been just so unbelievably, well, creepy and comfy. It's all that I hope for and more. And if you like this video, Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.